Okay, Mike, what's it like to be back for this reunion? Uh, it's great to be back, Patrick. Uh, I think I, I've mentioned to you, all of us, have been really appreciative of Coach Gard and the way he's really embraced what our team did 20 years ago. Uh, and to see from, from Coach Bennett to Bo to Greg some of the same things that helped our team be successful uh, means a lot to us. You know, the program in many ways hasn't changed a whole lot. Uh, it's a success. They've just gotten a lot better than we were. Uh, that's neat to see. And there's guys that still live in the state. Uh, we're huge fans as well, so it's really good to be back. Andy might just touch on it. Do uh, you think you guys kind of been on the ground floor and, and really have a stake in this program with with your success, especially that season and kind of the style of ball you play? Yeah, I think you know going to the Final Four, um, you know, it, it set a bar the bar a little bit higher for the program, and um, you know definitely I think the, the, the 20 years, 19 years, 20 years of straight NCAA tournament runs is. Uh, the first three years was the team that we played on. So, you know, it feels good to be a part of something. And you know, I think the, you know, after us, you know, Bull Ryan, Coach Guard, I think they, you know, ball is higher now. You know, they've been the two additional Final Fours. And I was looking up at the Raptors before, all the Sweet 16. So, it um, feels great to be recognized for what we did. And, you know, we feel great that we were part of building something special. Say so for each of you, I know it's been you know 20 years, but what are the what's the one moment that stands out the most to each of you from that season? Uh, for me, just just our bond as a team, uh, the relationship we had as a group, um, how everybody just bought in for one common goal. Uh, that was important. And, uh, just just the other night, just to get with these guys and just reminisce and talk about basketball and what everybody's doing now, it's just great. If I can cheat, I guess I would say the, that that run, those four games, those four wins that we had, looking back on it, I think it really allowed you know, fans, players, the coaching staff to wrap their arms around what it would take for our program to be successful. Because prior to that, while we, while we had some success, we also had many failures as well. Uh, and it's a style that some people don't like, you know, but I, but I think when you get some success, you can now rely on that and use it to build upon. And for us, it was great because it validated what Coach Bennett had been teaching us and showed us that it can be done that way. And I think it's, it's the best way in particular for this university based on where it's located, the recruiting base, to continue to have sustained success. And, and so that was huge because that was the first time we really saw it on a, on a major stage. And the line that's been used was when we made that run, that guaranteed Wisconsin would never be a Cinderella again. And I think, we didn't know it at the time, but that validated this style in that way. It was a big deal for us. That is cheating, give us a moment. <laughs> <laughs> well then the best moment was Camp Randall when we got to go back. And uh, we, yeah, that was the Bud Light commercials when I dropped the What's Up line. Uh, yeah, we all took a turn at the mic, and I think we all did our best to try to tell all the students that we need to go back to State Street and riot. I'm surprised they let us all have a microphone, but that's what we did. We were sort of successful. You know, the, the thinking back 20 years ago, um, more often as I get older, I think about Coach Ben and, and his legacy. He was a, a very successful coach, and he, he went to Green Bay, and he went to the NCAA tournament a couple times, and came to Wisconsin, and before we got there, he got back to the NCAA tournament and, and stabilized the program. And so, you know, I think about him and, you know, getting to the Final Four was special for Coach Bennett. And uh, one of the great memories was our pregame speech against Purdue. We had a theme that year of, of Touch the Dream. And Coach weaved that theme into the pregame speech, and you could hear a, a pin drop on the floor, and he was emotional. And uh, that sticks out as one of the best memories. And then going out and winning that game to get in the Final Four, which I think helped validate how successful and how good of a coach Coach Bennett was. I do remember uh, pregame, one of our pregames, one of those games. Uh, we watching the film, and it's pitch dark in there. And then the door opens up, and this bright light comes in. And this Kowski mom says, Kowski. <laughs> I got your milk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember well, I a lot of it. It's good Wisconsin team. We needed our milk before the game. That's good. It worked. <laughs> Mike, you 
like you guys enjoyed playing defense. I'm just curious if during that run, the LSU game, the way you defended them was the pinnacle under Dick. I, I think so. That was probably the greatest defense we played as a team, uh, and in particular Andy inside, uh, Stromile Swift and Jabari Smith. He had a couple of first round draft picks there. and Those guys, I mean, I think Andy just told me one of them was crying during the game. I said, that's, that was so mean, he made him cry. But uh, that, that, that was something else, when you kind of break the will of an opponent. And that didn't happen often. I don't know that I can remember many other times, but it felt like that happened in that game where we just totally took over on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, let's on that game a little bit. I was sitting around some national media guys, and they were, I think that was the first introduction to how well you guys could play defense, because they were kind of ooing and eyeing in, on press roll. And, and you blocked a couple shots and, and, and some steals and some of the things you guys were doing on defense. Could you expound on that, that game a little bit? Yeah, well, LSU was a heavy favorite, and they were playing very well. Um, we were, when they played, they beat Texas to, to play us in the Sweet 16, and we, we watched them play that game because it was before our game against Arizona. And I just remember Stromile Swift and Jabari Smith dunking all over the Longhorns. And so after we beat Arizona, I was like, oh great, I gotta guard those guys this next game. So we, you know, we, we were laser focused knowing that we had to play our best defense to, to take down LSU. Um, we had a, a great game plan going into that game. Uh, it worked, it, they were frustrated. Very, I think going into halftime, they only, they were, they were below 20 points, so we, we stopped them right away from the first, at the start of the first half. And so, um, yeah, that was, it was definitely the, the pinnacle of what we could do defensively to stop those guys. From the back. Hey, uh, what kind of advice would you guys give to this year's team? Oh, that's a good question. I, I, the one thing that I've thought about a lot lately is some of the turmoil that they've gone through. Uh, I think every team, every locker room in America has issues and, and nothing's perfect. And I think sometimes maybe you want it to be perfect. And even as we look back 20 years on our team, you, you talk about the good points, but there was always something happening in the locker room. And, uh, and that's normal. And I think sometimes I'd like to say to guys, it's okay. You know, sometimes all you have to do is wake up the next day and go to work and just keep pushing through. And that's, I think, what they're doing. And that's, they've got great leadership with Coach Guard. And I think they'll get through this. Um, I know they'll get through this, but that's that's what it takes. It's the simple things, just going to the next day. You know, we, you know, we really the, the year we went to the Final Four, there were a lot of ups and downs, and pretty much the whole season, I'm looking like we weren't going to get in the tournament, and we just stuck together and, and we didn't quit. Um, I remember there was a point in time where um, Coach Bennett challenged Mike in the middle of that season, and. We, we rallied around that and we never folded. And you know, this team right now, going through some of the turmoil the last two weeks, they, they, they could fold, but they're not. They're gonna stick together and they're, they're a good team. And they've had a really tough schedule so far, which I'm sure has toughened them up even more. So if they just stick together, they're gonna be fine. Mike, can you explain, what did Dick challenge you about or expect more? Well, what, what happened, I was, going for the career steals uh, record at Wisconsin, and they put like a steal meter or something in the rafters, which was so against everything our program was about, to have an individual sign, and they were counting down. And I got into foul trouble against Michigan State in our game here. I picked up two fouls early, and uh, it wasn't after the game, but it was like the next, whatever the media day was, maybe Monday, the next week, he had made a comment that, you know, we've got guys going for steals instead of playing team basketball. And, um, and you know, it, it, was, it was a little surprising because I, I, I always went for steals. I wasn't doing anything different than I always did, but it felt a little bit like a shot. Um, but my, I think my teammates were more upset about it than I was. And they were like, that's not right for him to call you out like that and you're a team player and everything else. And so I felt the support from them. And then our whole locker room was, even sometimes you go against your coach, like, you know what, we're going to show him, and that's how we kind of came together that year. There was a brief moment where he wouldn't even let us talk to the media. Remember that? Right after that game, and he had a whole thing about the, uh, you know, there's a fire inside each of us, and every time you talk, you open up the door to that oven or that furnace, and you're letting the heat out, and so he said, we're just going to keep it in. Meanwhile, it was him was the one that talked to the media and got this whole thing started. But nonetheless, it was, it was a, a moment where we all came together.
Roy, when, when you guys got to the tournament uh, prior to the Michigan State game, you started playing some pretty efficient offense. At, at, I think you scored over 60 in it. every one of those tournament games leading in. Um, well, what happened offensively to this team during that stretch? Was it as simple as John Bryant getting hot, or was it was there, was there more to it? I mean, John Bryant played a big part in that. Um, he was my roommate on the roads and during the tournament, and I used to just look at John and like, man, do you do you know what you're doing right now? So um, we just we just kind of bought it. I think our defense was was our offense, kind of pretty much. So um, guys just played hard, you know, played together, and uh, believed in each other, pretty much, and just trust in one another. Time for about two more, if anybody has them. <clears throat> what do you remember about the Indiana game here? When, when, when everyone kind of assumed that you clinched a spot in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, that was an incredible game because we knew how important it was. And Coach had, had laid out how many wins we needed to get just to get into the NCAA tournament. We knew we needed to win that. And Coach Knight being on the sidelines, I'll never forget uh, some of the students wearing, wearing blaze orange because he had just gotten into a hunting accident. I think he shot one of his buddies. Uh, so some students wore blaze orange, which was funny to me. Um, and then we came down the stretch. Um, we felt like the fans would rush the court, which had never happened for us if we won that game, and they did do that. It kind of ended a little bit controversially with the ball bouncing and sure the clock stopped or not, and then he smashed his clipboard and left the dent, I guess, in the floor that apparently we auctioned off at some point, I just found out. And, and the last thing I didn't know until this weekend is Otto Poles apparently got into a fight on the sidelines with their SID guy who knocked his glasses off. So Otto, the ever fiery Otto Poles, and pulled out one more story from that game. So that, that, that was really fun. That was a neat moment for us.